I'm sorry, is there something I can help you with? I just thought we might become better acquainted. Still, one mustn't forget one's station. Nor place undue import on what is ultimately a transaction born of necessity. Necessity? Well, your family needs money. My family needs a bride. What we don't need is more family. My lords, my ladies, my lordettes, I beg your audience to give you a spoiler field review of the new Netflix fantasy action show called Damsel. A lot of reviewers said they didn't like it. I think it was better than what they said. And I'm going to give you my review. And if you've never followed me before, my reviews are based on being a 40-year-old person, but less than 45, that has two kids under three. If I can stay awake for your film, you automatically get a six for me on a scale of zero being sucks and 10 being perfect. Guess what? I stayed awake, my lords and my ladies. This review starts right now. I'm up early for the dealers come out. Everybody is outside till the killers come out. You ain't eating, you just act full. I'm in pack full. Dozen funerals in a month. I got that full. I will give it to niggas in all rap forms. Ignatius out right now on all platforms. What's happening, everybody? You're in the building with y'all knowing, all loving, all feeling, all seeing, all powerful. Damn all everything. Sexy as hell host, that's me. Please subscribe to the channel. Follow me everywhere you can. I am on TikTok at Life Games one You're already on my YouTube channel. You might as well join my channel membership where I do stock advice, real estate advice, all the things that have got me to where I'm at now. And download the podcast. Let's start out with the title, Damsel. And the definition of damsel is young unmarried woman and you can see it on the screen. So they're giving you that definition, but I can just go ahead and tell you right now, this was definitely not no damsel in distress. The movie was directed by this man right here, Juan Franz uh, Nadello. You guys might famously know him from doing 28 Weeks Later, which I really, really did enjoy. And it is written by the same brother, Dan Mazu who did Fast X, Wrath of the Titans, and this is his feature with Damso. I always got to shout out the writers because I'm writing too, and hopefully I might be doing something with Netflix one of these big, fine days. Cast includes Millie Bobby Brown, who is also an executive producer of this film. She, I would have to say, is the godfather daughter, the goddaughter of Netflix because of what she did with that wonderful, wonderful show she had with those young men, Stranger Things. It also stars Angela Bassett as Lady Bedford. Millie Bobby Brown plays Ella Dean. Y'all know I love the name L because my daughter's name is L. Robin Wright, who we have to say is probably the godmother of Netflix and what she did with House of Cards, helping to catapult this thing into a streaming giant. She plays the bitch-ass queen Isabel. Nick Robinson plays the punk-ass son, Prince Henry. Ray Winstone plays Lloyd Bayford, the husband of Angela Bassett. And then we got Brooke Carter, who plays Floria. And then the most scary thing about the dragon, the voice. And she was voiced, the dragon was voiced by Shorin Agadalasi. And I'm so sorry if I butchered your name, my friend. But as we get into this story, we start with Act 1, where they're setting everything up. And the beginning of this movie starts with an incredible battle scene, where it's centuries before the start of the main timeline of the story. And you can see a dragon flying over the kingdom. And if you thought that this movie was going to have anything close to do with Game of Thrones, I'm sorry, ain't a whole lot of Game of Thrones in this, other than Arya Stark from Game of Thrones. The land where the dragon's lair is and the kingdom is called Arya. <laughs> and you see the king going into the dragon's lair. Now, supposedly this dragon has been burning up the kingdom. I think that was a lie. You guys let me know what you think. But they go in there and what did they do? Three little eggs hatch with new dragons and they killed them. And the dragon comes back 
And boy, does she set a blaze to these MFs. I mean, set a blaze. And the dragon's fire, it comes out more like lava. So when she rolls it out, it's like lava taking over these guys, killing all the king's men. She spared the king and basically said, since you took my kids, you're going to have to offer me three of your kids from generations going forward. And so they move the story along, and we finally get to meet Elodie and Floria. Stepmom is Lady Bedford, and her dad is Lord Bedford. And they are in the north, and the north is cold as hell. I mean, they get like 160 days of night and damn near 365 days of cold, and this has been a harsh winter for them. And they're having to make desperate choices. Now, Lord Bedford, I guess he's kind of like a farmer or something to that degree. And Lady Bedford, her ass is regal as hell with this scrawny-ass Lord Bedford. And I'm thinking to myself, y'all might not be as poor if y'all didn't have Lady Bedford dressed up and shit. Perfect makeup, perfect skin, perfect outfit. Lady Bedford looked more like Queen Bedford. But I digress. And they're having such a bad time. We find Elodie, played by Millie Bobby Brown, popping up into the room with Dad and Stepmom. And we see a red priestess, damn fine-looking red priestess at that, take a look at Millie Bobby Brown and says she'll do, and we all wondering what the hell is going on. Well, a deal has been made. The kingdom needs a new bride for the prince. And so Millie Bobby Brown Elodie is going to be it. So they catch a boat, and they're headed to Aria. And on their way to Aria, they notice these striking dragons, pillars, with fire breathing in as they're going into Aria. That kind of had everybody on the edge, letting them think, okay, something is afoot here. Now, mind you all, this is still Act 1. We get to the king, and we meet Robin Wright play, playing Queen Isabel. Her ass is smug, hateful, bitch-ass queen. And then we see her ugly-ass son, Harry, who is going to wind up marrying Elodie. Now, here's the catch. Elodie sent him a note that stepmom helped narrate. And the note was a little different from the way Elodie is. Elodie was damn near like, you know, she was aggressive. She, she's not some meager damsel. And the note eluded that she was, so Henry thought she was a damsel. And they get to talking and walking. And you can tell he's really feeling her. Elodie, I think, is trying to get to feel him. But in the end, she's really doing this because she knows it's going to help the kingdom. And something striking happens after that. The dad goes in there to talk to the queen. Now, mind you, the king is here too, but he's a no, he's a effing nobody. Ain't nobody, ain't nothing going on with him. And as they're talking and this deal is going on, he storms out a little upset. And the first thing we notice about the queen, she walked right on past Lady Bayford and didn't say nothing to her. And dad comes out and basically lies to Lady Bayford not telling her what's really going on. Because in that moment, Dad knew from that meeting that they was going to kill his daughter. And guess what? He goes on my you ain't shit list because he was going to give up his daughter to quote-unquote save his kingdom. Now, I love when stories try to give you this dynamic, this decision. Should I save my flesh and blood or do I save my kingdom and my people? He chose to give up his daughter to try to save the people because they paid him all this gold. All right. Before they get before Elodie and Henry get married, the mom can tell that something ain't right. And that conversation that I played in the very beginning of this review was the conversation the mom had with the queen who basically said, you are non-factor to me, boo. And the mom could feel that she ran straight in there to try to tell Elodie not to marry this punk. But you know what? That ain't work. And Elodie had already seen a flashing light in the mountainside, and she's seen another little girl a floor below her. Needless to say, Elodie is not aware that there's this thing going on where they got to have these three bloodlines to give to the damn dragon. And she didn't know that this prince was supporting polygamy, having to marry three women. But we get on to the ceremony they putting on this dress and all the trappings that go at this dress. And it's important you keep up with them dress trappings because that's going to later come back to help 
Elodie. They go over here to this place where they're going to get married and they're going to jump the broom. He's going to carry her across the threshold. And they do this ceremony where they damn near cut. They cut his hand, cut her hand. Now they blood. And he told her, close your eyes. I'm going to carry you across the threshold. What his punk ass do? Throw her into the dragon pit like a sack of groceries. You know, he's definitely not someone you want to take grocery shopping with you because your egg's going to be broke. And that starts act two where Elodie is in the caverns with this fire-breathing female dragon who is mad. She's under the impression of a lie. Her kids have been killed centuries ago, and all these centuries they've been throwing little girls down there as a sacrifice to keep the kingdom from being burnt up. <clears throat> so Elodie gets down there. She encounters the dragon, and this dragon has a problem. This dragon likes to toy with his people. Now, mind you, every century... They're supposed to be bringing girls down there. So, I mean, most people think a century, um, a generation, excuse me, not a century. A generation is like 20 years. So every 20 years, you're bringing three girls down here for penance for what y'all did to this lady's drag, to this lady's kids. And the dragon is menacing in terms of voice. But the one thing I didn't like about the dragon, it looks like they literally took a gremlin from 1980 and gave it a lizard's tail and a snake body and a horse arms and turn it into a damn dragon. I wasn't thrilled with the CGI of the dragon, but I digress. The dragon is playing around with Elodie, scaring her, and really didn't get a chance to kill her because eventually Elodie finds these glow worms of life that can heal the body. They heal her up, and she finds a way to escape. And on her way out, her dad done got a conscience. He comes back to save her. And guess what? He dies. Now, I was wondering to myself why you didn't save your daddy with them glow worms. But anyway, the dragon killed the daddy and all the men. But that allowed Elodie to get out. And when Elodie got free, the dragon soared through the air, went and burnt, put a blaze on the damn kingdom. And the kingdom knew somehow or another Elodie got away. So they go get her sister, Floria. And Floria of anybody in this family more so wanted to be all ingratiated with royalty. And when they took Floria, why the hell y'all had to stab Lady Bayford? Angela Bassett got stabbed. Like, come on, man. Really, y'all had to do her like that? And they're going to give the sister to the dragon. Well, guess what? The dragon knew that he, she had, if she had the sister, that Elodie would come back. And damn sure did Elodie came back. And this is when they get into the fisticuffs and the fight. And it's a one-on-one -on -one between Elodie and the dragon. And this is where things kind of got weird because the dragon could have been into Elodie. Could have been into Elodie, but never did. Never did. And because of that, Elodie and the dragon are standing face to face. She winds up stabbing the dragon in the damn eye. The dragon could have burned her up again. And she uses her sister as a distraction. And then she figures out that the way the, the dragon burnt blows lava if I can get over here by this damn shell that's on the wall, and we just happen to have a seashell down here in the caverns, I can get the dragon to blow fire, and then it'll reflect and burn itself. And that's what happened. Now, I thought that was a little weird. You mean to tell me that somehow or another this dragon can blow fire out of its mouth, but it can't take fire on its body? I thought that was a little weird, because every time the dragon get ready to glow to burn fire, the neck turned red, but if fire get on the dragon, it hurts it. I thought that was a little wonky. But then at the end of the day, LD told the dragon up, cut the hand, clip the wing, cut out the eyeball. This dragon was done. And throughout all this, she's telling the dragon, they've been lying to you. They planned you. These girls you think are bloodline, they're not. You t running around me talking about you can smell the blood on me. All they do is cut our hands rub us with one of the princes, and then come throw us down here to pretend like we in the bloodline and we're not. And now that she done beat the damn dragon up, the dragon's like, kill me. And instead of killing the dragon, what does Elodie do? Having such a big heart, did y'all see her down there trying to save the burning birds and shit? I'm thinking, girl, you better think about saving yourself. But her heart is big. She decides to save the dragon by putting those glow worms of life on the dragon to resurrect the dragon 
And I'm assuming she put like six of them in the eyeball because the eyeball came back too. And instead of killing the dragon, she becomes teams with the dragon. She goes back to the kingdom, tells them, let this girl go. The kingdom is looking at her like, why should we be afraid of you? You are nobody. And she says, you don't need to be afraid of me. And then who flies in the top of the garden, standing on the king, I mean, on top of the, the, the castle? The dragon. And sets ablaze and kills everybody. And then the film ends with Elodie, her family, what's left of the family, riding off into the ocean with the dragon following them. And I'm wondering where the hell is the dragon going? Because the dragon is just going to be their new pet. Um, where is any male dragons? Um, basically, this dragon was the last of her kind. She didn't like humans. But the only reason she wasn't scorching the kingdom was because they had this pack and they kept throwing all these non-kids down there. Now, my thing is, didn't the people in the land wonder what was happening to all these girls? Did they ever think about that? Um, did they wonder when you send your people there, they never come back and help? I would have think people would have eventually caught on to that, but uh, I guess they didn't catch on to that. In the event, I enjoyed the movie. It was fun for me. Um, it wasn't a masterpiece. The thing about Millie Bobby Brown is you're going to get what she gives you. And the thing with her is you have all these actors that are good in particular things. Like we re referenced Samuel L. Jackson as the cuss master. We referenced um, Elizabeth, I can't think of her last name, from Handmaiden's Tales as being able to cry on a dime. Millie Bobby Brown, her ass can scream on a dime. In <laughs> Stranger Things, she do a lot of screaming. You're going to get a lot of screaming for her in this. And I liked it. Like I said, I stayed awake. I give this thing a solid 6.5. It's entertaining. Definitely worth your view. The dragon was a little wonky looking. That's my only gripe. Story could have been a little better, but I mean, for what it was, it was decent. So I would definitely say it is worth a weekend view, but I want to hear from you guys. Post me all your comments. Let me know what you think. I enjoyed Angela Bassett in this thing. It's just that they probably wouldn't have been Poe if she wasn't spending so much on her attire. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video. Don't forget to like the video, comment, subscribe, get yourself that life game. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and the TikTok. Download the podcast, and until that next sex is hell video, I'm out.